Welcome back to another episode of Pajama Party Profits. This is my party. I'm the host, Brenda Trott. Some call me the make money in your sleep girl. But really, I just love to bring on people who are making it happen from home or from wherever they want in the world. And today, I'm really super excited to share with you Kathleen. Kathleen has uh, will tell us about her journey into entrepreneurship, but really excited because she is what many of us start a side hustle and we could call ourselves. Um, uh, she helped me with the word earlier. <laughs> Freelancers. OK, we'll start with she started off as a freelancer. And now she pretty much has her own agency with people working all around her. So please welcome in Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. Hi. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. Yeah, you you saw. Um, I think you saw my laughing guy on our Facebook page on Done for You Media on Facebook, and I think I had a little blurb there and said, "Hey, who else should I feature?" And you let me know about your success, and I'm really happy to have you. Okay. Well, I'll just uh, start right in with uh, telling my story. I um, started out. Um, I've been a, was a bookkeeper for over 20 years, uh, working with numbers, working in small business, and I enjoyed that. But I had always wanted the opportunity to work from home and have a more uh, open schedule. And um, in 2010, I, I started recognizing that people were starting to look for writing opportunities online, which wasn't something I had ever thought of uh, for myself, uh, being mostly working with numbers, but working in business, you also do a lot of writing, uh, whether it's letters or contracts or those types of things. And writing was something that I did uh, on the side of, I, I was writing poetry, writing uh, a n number of different um, small fiction, that type of thing. And so I started exploring the possibility of freelance writing. In 2010, um, probably about March, April in the spring, started finding the places where you could uh, find people, businesses looking for writers to write for them. And uh, got um, my first job in, in l less than a month of looking and it paid fairly well. And so that uh, really encouraged me and I kept uh, working at it. And uh, within 11 months, I was able to secure enough um, clients with ongoing work in order to quit my job. And All right, let's stop you right there, Kathleen, because already <laughs> people's jaws are dropping. They're like, what? <laughs> First of all, you, like, you, you kind of said it, you, you were an accountant. So how as an accountant, because I think that's right brain, and then writing is typically, unless you're talking about real technical writing, and I don't think you are, that's no. typically left brain. So <laughs> how on earth, you said, oh, I didn't think about it, but then I did it. What? <laughs> Yeah. Explain that just a little bit more for me. <laughs> well, I, I guess that's uh, part of my strange personality that um, uh, I have a very creative side, but my my work side was, yes, much more logic based. Um, so I've I've always worked in both areas. I just never thought of making money from uh, the creative side. But uh, the oh, two oh, 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 that's like golden right there. That is yeah. golden. OK, <laughs> because first of all, let me just say a lot of people would say, OK, I'm an accountant and I could do accounting from home. I could just find right. some. OK, so something tells me that there might have been a little bit. It makes more sense when you say you had you had a bit of both in you. You're, you had a creative side that was probably just maybe one of the reasons why you wanted to work from home. If, if I'm yeah. if I think right. But what you just said there was like golden. You're like. I love to, to do this creative stuff, but I didn't know I could make money from it. And that's right. what that listeners really need to know is that sometimes it's just right in front of you and you have no right. idea what it is. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Now I'll stop interrupting you. Okay. So let's go ahead and zoom on back. You said well, it, you did this, you started, you found out the places that would pay you money and then all within with less than a year. Wow. What, you were able to stay home. Right. Right. 
I was able to stay home. And, and I think my background in business and working in business really helped me a lot um, because sometimes that's what freelancers are missing is that they don't understand uh, how business works and how to uh, speak to clients and those types of things. Um, so, so that worked very much in my favor. Um, but it was very interesting to me within the first month of me working full time, I already had more work than I could do in the hours that I was working. <laughs> so um, I was like, okay, how do I do this? Because I, I've got these new clients coming in and I don't want to turn them away because clients can come and go. I know that. And I reached out to some of my writer friends and says, anybody want to help me out so I can get through this heavy period of, of taking on new clients? And so, sure, I had a few writers said, sure, I'd like to make some extra money on the side. And, and so they took on a few uh, projects for me. And what ended up totally taking me by surprise is that didn't end. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't come to this lull. I kept having more work and more work and needing more help and more help. <laughs> All right. So um, you're kind of one of those, uh, my dream came true, even though I didn't know it was my dream kind of stories. <laughs> Which is awesome. But I also know there's some writers going, Oh, are you serious? <laughs> like there's people out there that have, have tried uh, all these different agencies and, and they're the Upwork kind of model and they right. pitch and they pitch and they don't get anything. So what was your secret? How did you get something started so fast and, and really not lose it? Right. Um, part of it was getting one really big consistent client to begin with. Um, so th they were providing me with $500 worth of work every week. And um, that, that was really key to me, you know, being able to quit my job and start working with, you know, always knowing that that was there, even though we didn't have a set contract for how long that would be, just dependent on how long the, the client had that much work. Um, so that, that did make a big difference. Yeah, because you had like all, not really, I love that you didn't have all of your eggs in one basket, but you had a big right. egg in your basket yeah. and you didn't know when that was going to crack. So yeah. um, I, I, I it still took a huge leap of faith to say, okay, I, this is what I want to do and not go to some work for somebody else. What right. about, did it, what about when you got sick? And things took longer. And like, did you did you have to learn all that stuff about working from home on your own? Like today, I I woke up with the worst kind of headaches. So uh, <laughs> I mean, and it happens. And I don't get yeah. paid if if you know I I can't charge a sick day to my clients. So right. how do you handle that? Right, and that that was part of the taking on other other writers and having them help. Um, that gave me a lot more flexibility in that area, especially since they were writers that I could trust, um, that if I needed extra help, I could outsource that. Um, if I was going to be on vacation, you know, I could l l lessen my load. I never let go of it completely. Um, and it, a lot of times it did mean if I was taking time off during the week, then I was working on the weekend. So I worked a lot of hours um, that first year with, with building my business and people continually coming in. Um, that, that was a big part of it. And yes, I had to learn that, okay, <laughs> um, how, how, how do I handle this and not burn myself out, but not, you know, not lose clients at the same time, uh, meet those deadlines, and, and also um, very much learn not to wait till the last minute. Um, I've seen a lot of writers do that. They assume, well, I can do this in a day, and I've got three days, so I'll wait till the last day. And then they get sick. 
or this happens or that happens. So one of my things that I always did was I was getting things done as soon as I could. The other good thing about that is when you're turning things in early to your clients, they say, oh, she can handle more work. And so then they are more likely to give you more work, where if you're just turning it in at the deadline, then they feel like, well, she's filled up on what she can handle. So it's a little psychological thing in there, too, of always trying to turn things in ahead of time instead of waiting for the last minute. Now, you've been doing this for a while, so it might be hard to, to answer this next question, but I know uh, and as a writer, I sometimes have to, I have to double or triple what I think it's going to take me because it always takes longer than I think. So when yeah. you're saying turning things early, I'm thinking, wow, I almost never did that because it would, I don't know if it was a perfectionism thing or if it was, I'm not even sure. And I have never been a per, per hour type of business owner. It right. just never makes sense to me because I, if we multitask, if we, I don't want somebody yeah. to count my bathroom breaks, you know, so it was always per piece, but I always had to think, okay, it's going to take me a day. No, I'm going to tell them three days. <laughs> so always intending to turn it in, in a day and it didn't happen. So did that kind of thing happen to you too? Um, yes, that's, that's very, very true. That's, I know, um, that was something I really worked on when I first started, um, writing, I realized, my goodness, it's taking me way too long to uh, write this, my, my pay per hour, I was charging by piece, but if it took me three hours, and I was only getting paid what I wanted for one hour, I realized I really have to, I have to change things up. Because that, that way I can, yes, make more, the more money I can make per hour, the more my less hours I have to work <laughs> to make my goals. Um, so I really did lo look for ways to um, decrease my uh, research time, um, looking for, for um, just speeding up my whole ri writing process, and also looking for the types of jobs that were going to require less research, less work. Um, if I'm writing on the same topic all, over and over again, it ends up getting requiring less research all the time because the information is getting stuck in your head and you can write a lot of it off the top of your head. So looking for those types of, of jobs and work uh, were an, another way that I was getting rid of that issue. All right. Um, it is almost time to play our game. And I, you, know, you don't seem too scared. So some of my show or guests think, oh, no, this is crazy. Uh, you know, they get a scared game. That means winning, losing. <laughs> We're just going to, this little icebreaker, but I love it. Fellow writer. So what we came up with is we are going to do uh, some word association things. And we'll, we'll set the timer for about 30 seconds. But um, after that, I really, I have two big questions for you. Um, one is just about whether or not you notice the same kind of woo-woo stuff I do as, as a freelancer. And the other is um, just giving us a little bit more of a clue about finding those big clients or that, those big eggs. So that's the one that says it's time for a game. Um, because I have a feeling you didn't find those clients from agencies or if you did they're not the kind of agencies that are typically looked at so i want you to let us in on that secret but first are you ready for our word game sure <laughs> you, all right do you want to go first or do you you go first all right i know the perfect word to start with <laughs> i hope i'm gonna set the timer for 30 seconds just to see if anyone gets stuck and let me see if I can get us both on the screen here. All right. They should be able to see us both now. All right. First word. Ready? Yep. Counting. Uh, business. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Um, business marketing. Um, digital. Ooh, I have to say clock. <laughs> um, oh, that's right. <laughs> Perfect. That was that was a fast thirty seconds there. All right, yay! You said you Google took away all my cheering apps. I have to if, if uh, you watch and you know how to get a new cheering app into the Hangouts, please uh, let me know as I I want to successfully applaud our our uh, guests here on pajama party <laughs> profit thank you kathleen all right so let me explain the first part of the question i was talking about i remember some of the best games that i had in or the best days most profitable days i'll say as a freelance writer were actually the days i didn't look for clients it was something mystical to be honest with you because i would um i would spend too many hours away from my family just clicking away trying to put myself out there trying to apply for things um and it was all in this huge rush to get you know the next paycheck coming and then i discovered that when they pulled me away and they said come on we're gonna go we're going to go here and you're driving us at five o'clock in the morning and we're going to have a good time. And um, those were my most profitable days. That's when the text started rolling in. That's when the orders would come in. That's when all the, and I thought, this is like, this is crazy. There's got to be something, you know, energetically. Now, have I completely thrown you for a loop or can you say, yeah, you've experienced that too? Uh, something like that. I, I can't say that, um, many of the clients um, came unexpectedly, the bigger clients uh, that we were t you t wanted me to talk about more, um, that um, it might be, uh, part particularly this last year, I asked someone, you know, how did you find me? And I said, oh, on Google. And I'm like, really? <laughs> 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 there uh, are millions of freelance writers on Google. How did you... <laughs> Happened. Oh, I don't know. I was just googling, and I saw. And it, when I went to your website, it looked like a person that I would like to contact, and I was like shocked. <laughs> um, but you know, there there have been um, those types of things, or something that I applied to that was to me seemed like a small thing, and ended up be becoming this huge client. So. Um, Different connections like that um, have have really I've experienced a lot in my business where it's like I can't tell you how to do that because it just happened. It just happened. Wow! Yeah. So you're really answering both of my questions at the same time. The whole mystic thing, yeah. and then the other one was how did you find these bigger eggs and these bigger baskets? And I get it. You're like you treat every single little piece like it's a big piece, and right. you just ethical you don't treat anything small like it's small because it can be bigger and i think i'd have to agree with you in the freelance work um i would take on little time like i think i've had probably the smallest one is somebody wanted me to write their bio for them for you know when i was new and it was like 25 dollars, and i had her on the, i but i treated her like a queen and it brought me more and more business because she was a queen but you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's yeah. nothing yeah. small Great, great. And the, another thing I, I to to go more into that and in getting those clients um, that uh, for my business I've really uh, focused on providing volume. So that that's how I market myself. Is that you've got you've got a lot of work that needs to be done and it needs to be done fast. Um, I can provide that for you, and um, so that. People are looking for that, um, reliable. Um, and most of my big clients' ongoing work are marketing agencies. And okay. um, I target them because they have multiple clients. So um, we do a lot of um, blog writing for businesses through marketing firms. Because they have their their clients and their clients, this client wants two a month, this one's four a month. Um, so they might have a list of 20 different clients 
that need two to four blogs a month. And they need writers to provide those every month. And as their company grows, then my business with them also continues to grow. And that's, that's how I'm uh, providing work to the multiple writers that subcontract under me. Uh, we go th th through those marketing. Um, so another thing is um, website copy. So website designers and marketing companies also, they're, you know, rather than uh, writing the copy for a business and they said, thank you, it was great. Um, when you're working with the website designer themselves, they say, you did great. Here's the next one we have coming up that we're designing. So it's that ongoing work has really been critical to my success clients that are going to come back month after month with work. Um, that's really huge. And so I will give a very uh, discounted price for um, the higher volume projects, because that means, you know, I don't have to spend the time out there looking for work. And I really encourage writers um, to do that, to understand that somebody giving you a con signing a contract and say, I'm going to give you X amount of dollars every month for the next six months or the next year is worth a discount the price to them to, to have that kind of security. And so, you know, because it, it saves you time. If you're not having to go out and spend half your day looking for work, and instead you're spending it actually doing writing, you can actually charge a lower amount because you don't have that overhead to pay for. Right, good points, good good points. So uh, we are almost out of time and I'm, I'm really glad that you uh, reached out and wanted to share your story because I, I think it's, it's wonderful, especially that great point about not even realizing you could make money with something that you like to do. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask, I think we have time for two. Do you ever feel like, I think one of the things that people are worried about when it comes to starting their own business or, you know, taking that leap from corporate to home is they feel like they're going to get stuck. Um, I don't know why they don't feel that way when they take a job, <laughs> but <laughs> they, they feel like, mm, yeah, I like to write, but I like to write my own thing. I don't like to write other people's things. So do you ever feel like it's it's not, uh, doesn't have enough variety? Or um, is there any, what what were the, I think that's the, the, the basic question I have for you about that is that do you, do you ever feel like, oh, that's just, that's stuff I don't want to write, you know? Yeah, it, it, there can be, especially, you know, like I said, it, it there's the advantage of writing on the same topic in that you don't have less research and whatever, but also, yes, you can get really burnt out on writing dentist stuff, you know, <laughs> it's like, ah, do it, you know, uh, different people um, handle that. There some people just absolutely can't stand that repetitive stuff. Um, one of my sisters who writes for me full time, she loves it. She, she is the queen of, she says, give it to me because I can write it so fast. I can make so much money knowing that I'm writing on the something that I, I can take off the top of my head. And she does a lot of dental stuff. That's why I brought that up. So <laughs> if you need to know anything about crowns or whatever, it's in her head. <laughs> wow. um, but um, I did find that with when I write full time, uh, for clients that I don't have the, the creative energy and time to write the stuff that I like to write. So that, that is, is a drawback there. Um, but as far as variety, I've never had a problem with that. I've always, I love learning. So I, whatever it is, you know, learning about a new industry, learning about attorneys, learning about different things. Um, I enjoy that. Um, I also have done quite a bit of magazine writing, and I really love that, um, interviewing people and telling their story. Um, that's, that's a great um, avenue for freelance writers. Sometimes it's not the best paying, 
I find writing for businesses is better pay, but it's really enjoyable to do um, the magazine writing. Oh, you call that magazine writing? That's my my favorite thing. I, I love to interview actually new coaches and help them uh, with lead carrots or uh, those, those types of things to help them continue to get more business. And obviously my favorite thing to do is interview people, but then I can convert those into great pieces of writing too. Kathleen, one more question for you. For um, Thank okay. you so much for sharing your time with us. You, um, you just gave us some great advice when you said that you don't necessarily, you know, don't overlook those things that you love to do because you can possibly make money from them. Right. But what else, what would be the very first thing that you would tell someone who really wants to step out and work for themselves? What's the first thing that you would suggest they do? Um, connect with other people who are already doing it. Connect mm -hmm. with other freelancers. Um, the particularly writers, you will find what, and what I found was they, they are not your competitors. They are on your team. Um, my first, um, writing a magazine article came from another writer said, here, here's the email address to the editor for this magazine. Go ahead and send her a pitch. Um, continually other writers have helped me, other editors, um, the writing community is very supportive. There's more than enough to go around. Um, that's why I have a, a, a group on Facebook, Living the Freelance Writing Life. Um, that's what we do is we just help each other out. Um, here's a place to look. Uh, I, you know, somebody might get a chance at an opportunity, but they're not interested in it, they'll share it. It's, it's a great, great thing. Get connected with other writers. Great, and I hope you will share their, uh, this interview with them there. Kathleen, please uh, do send me that link. We'll have all the links that she mentioned. Uh, her business, if you want to get in touch with Kathleen, have some content written for your business. Uh, she also has a personal website. We've got that all on the show notes at pajamapartyprofits.com. And of course, make sure that you subscribe either on YouTube or right on the page of uh, pajamapartyprofits.com because you don't want to miss our other work from home rock stars. Thanks so much, Kathleen. <laughs> Thanks.